In this chapter, we are going to be looking into effects and how we can actually sequence those. I have shown you a little bit about how I usually play very hands-on with my effects. Let me just play a little drum loop and I'll play around with these effects while I go along with it. I have prepared um, very rudimentary just a kick, uh, a clap, and a hi-hat. There's not a lot of interesting stuff going on, but uh, it's some signals to play around with. Let's see what happens. So the pattern, that's just what it is. Let's see what happens when we start adding in some effects. Let's solve one. Some delays. That's all cool. And all nice. The upside of this is that you have full control over what's going on here, but sometimes you already know exactly where and when you want those delays and those tills and everything to hit. And very likely it's not all the time, but it's only at certain points. I am using my VCA matrix, but if you remember the little chapter we did on making your own aux sends, uh, you can do it there as well, where um, the only thing you're gonna need to do is interrupt um, the signal between your multiple and the mixer with a VCA, and then you're gonna be sending whatever we're gonna do, you're gonna send them to those VCAs. I'll show you later in a little bit, but first I'm gonna patch it up over here on my VCA matrix. Imagine we have uh, this rhythm going on. That's all nice. And we're gonna want to send uh, that clap somewhere into delay space every now and then. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it on this side uh, on this other sequencer that I have. I am going to send uh, some um, uh, some gates into envelopes into the VCA that controls uh, my, uh, my signals to the effects. And I'm going to time that at the moments where I actually want to hear uh, the effects applied uh, to whatever is going on. So let's take um, uh, a sequencer channel. I'm, I'm going to ram it into uh, an envelope. And that envelope is then going to head off into, um, let me see. That envelope is going to head off into uh, the VCA, uh, into the VCA matrix in the channel of the snare, which is going to send it to uh, the delay. So I'm going to just patch that in over here. I'm going to take another output and I'm going to send that into the other side of the delay because delays can be stereo and stereo panning with delays is a lot of fun. So let's just do that. Here we go. What I have over here on my right side is a sequencer. Any sequencer will do for this, uh, but preferably you're going to use something like a trigger sequencer uh, for it. And um, basically I am clocking this sequencer at a way lower speed that I am sequencing my uh, my main triggers and everything. The reason for this is that um, I want a lot of difference, like I want a lot of space and variation over a longer course. So if I'm gonna clock through 16 steps very quickly, then I am uh, gonna have an issue because it's gonna be looping very short. So if I space it out long enough and make those steps uh, uh, far and wide in between, then I can make a very long arcing uh, curve of changes and stuff like that, which is going to be a lot more fun uh, to listen to. So uh, this sequencer is running probably at, um, uh, at one eighth the speed of the main sequencer, um, but that is plenty. Uh, we're only going to be sequencing envelopes with this, and those envelopes are going to be opening up uh, the VCA that sends uh, the signal to our effects. So in this case, we're going to be sending claps to delays. And uh, I did this by, um, yeah, so um, the second sequencer is being clocked. Um, I have two channels connected to two envelopes. Those envelopes are going to the VCA. VCA sending signal to the effects. Okay, so what I have going on here now is I am sequencing um, uh, the moments where the signal from my dry clap is going to be hitting the delay. And um, this gives me some full control to kind of somewhat automate 
uh, my effects uh, in ways that uh, I could also do by hand, but if I really know the exact positions where I want to hit something, this is going to make my life easier. So if I his, uh, hit play right now, then my second sequencer, which is playing at a different speed, probably a lot slower, which gives me a little bit more resolution to play with, uh, that one is going to be sequencing those effects, which just makes the whole signal package a little bit more interesting. Let's have a listen. There we go. 